Stephen, I've gotten a lot of emails that you are so concerned about end times and the possibility of a major third war, third world war, that uh, you may even end your own radio broadcast. Is that true? That's true, George. Uh, I am really concerned. And let me share this with you. I'm not trying to, quote, uh, do anything other than give people the warning. And I, I, I basically now am pre-recording the last shows. My last show, I think, will be around the 15th of September. Uh, right now, I'm doing no more live shows. I am that concerned. Let me tell you what's going on. With and will Russia. you still make yourself available to this program? Absolutely. Okay. You know, and and here's the thing. I actually announced that too. I said the only show I'm going to do is I said I'll do one more show with Alex, and I said I'll do a show with George. And I said that's all I know so far. Let's get to what's going on in Russia. Russia's given us a 21-day deadline to pull out of the Black Sea. Under the Mediterranean Agreement, there can only be so many NATO ships in that part of the world at any given time. Now, as you know, the United States wants to put uh, radar in Poland and some anti-missile systems, mm -hmm. and, and Russia sees himself as being encircled. In quid pro quo basis, Russia now is basically bringing men and materials into Cuba, and as, as interesting, this isn't reported in the mainstream press. Nothing I'm talking about is in the press because we're being inundated with what I call the inaneness of the entertain. Nothing makes me crazier than the, the absolute inane programming that comes out of the network, you know, all the big stations. So what we've got now is we've got a timetable where Vladimir Putin made the statement that he is going to basically match NATO ship for ship. One of the Russian generals, and here's what I learned, George, in all the years of understanding the Russians, if you know a specific personality and they do what they say they're going to do and they're not known for Bravo Sierra, in other words, BS, and when you hear them saying that they can sink every ship we have in the Black Sea in 20 minutes, that's not an endless boast. The Russians have what are called super sunburn missiles. They also have the Squall Torpedo. A torpedo, you're an old Navy man, a torpedo that can go three to 400 miles an hour is a threat to any ship. And meanwhile, Cheney is in... Azerbaijan talking about oil and energy while all this is going on, which Absolutely. I find to be very strange. It's very strange because not only that, but uh, I have Norwegian listeners to my radio show, and, and they give me real-time reports of the Russian bombers overhead and then the Norwegian scramble their fighters to intercept them. But what's really troubling is the amount of men and materials going into Venezuela, going into Cuba, under the guise of these hurricanes, there's a whole lot of submarine movement. One of the things that we've been able to do on my radio program is because there are a lot of people, ex-military, ex-intelligence, that want the American people to understand how vulnerable we are. Is it true that the Georgian government initially started killing citizens in those two broken-off provinces, and it amounts to... Maybe it was a 1,000 people, maybe more at the time. Is that true? Is that, that a true statement? That does appear to be true. And, it, and as you know, Vladimir Putin said the United States is behind it. Now, I'm not going to take – I'm not trying to, quote, take sides, but what I'm trying to share is this. Let me, let me put the big picture, and then we'll back it up. There are a group of individuals that believe that in order to bring about the New World Order, there has to be a World War III. And World War III isn't going to happen just by accident. It's being engineered to happen. They believe that out of this World War III comes a man of peace. That's their uh, savior, and he's known as, as in, in the Bible as the Antichrist or the man of perdition. And what's fascinating, George, is that Ezekiel 38 starts as Gog-Magog war, and what's even becoming more apparent is that the rhetoric is escalating. I tell everybody, and I think it's a good, uh, a good key indicator, watch the rhetoric, and as the rhetoric rises so will the actions become more extreme and and it is rising and it's rising and the thing is is that the world war three scenario we get live reports uh, again a, a good example uh, a number of months ago hawk was on my radio program again he's my guest host uh taking thursdays for me and uh, they were uh, someone had informed him some of his contacts that there was a russian supersonic bomber that one of our p3 or one of our sub-hunting aircraft had intercepted uh, off, I think, the Grand Banks of North Carolina. The P-3 was uh, basically giving a warning and asking for assistance, and some junior-level 
military person wasn't taking them serious. Hawk began to broadcast, hey, you guys better get uh, something up there. We've got a supersonic coming in below radar that's coming hot and heavy, and no one's paying attention to their warning calls. Well, within five minutes, a massive amount of jets were scrambled. But you see, it's not just a return to the Cold War. I want to make this clear. I believe this is the beginning of World War III. And if people understand that all it takes is somebody responding the wrong way with a sub-encounter, and we are intercepting subs. Even right now, I just got an email going on that the uh, sub-hunts are on right now off the east and west coast and that all the military channels. Now, we don't know what they're saying. We just know that, you know, the specific information is out there that this is escalating. So Putin is saying to the United States, if you're going to be in my backyard, I'm going to be in your backyard. But is anybody dumb enough to, to launch nukes? Well, let me tell you this. Do you know that the Russians just stated again, and met that gave a five-point plan recently, that uh, Russia reserves the right and will use preemptive nuclear weapons? Uh, yeah, especially in Poland. Yep. And the thing is, is that do I think anybody's dumb enough? No, but I think if it gets out of hand, it will escalate to that. And this is what's incredible, because here's the deal. Russia has let it be known that if either Israel or the United States attacks Iran, that it's all over. Even uh, Bashar al-Assad of Syria, the different Iranian spokesmen, everybody is saying if this takes place, it's World War III. What happened overnight? Again, it, it, it it's not overnight. These things are festering. But it appears to us like the mortgage collapse, that all of a sudden it just happened. I mean, how did the Russians become so anti everything that's going on now? What happened? What provoked them? Well, pretty much the idea after after the breakup of, and I believe that was staged, but uh, they wanted to be treated. This is their statement now, okay? They want to be treated as an equal. We kept them out of the, of the G8. We kept them out of so many different things. And NATO's expansion eastward from the west moving east into the former Soviet breakaway territories, i.e. the Ukraine, Georgia was a big issue, obviously Poland. The thing is, is that that is when they drew the line in the sand. But the Georgian incident seems to have been generated to provoke uh, a military response. 